Okay, so the review on bonding, the way that things bond, all right? One, bonding between atoms arises because the atom's own nucleus is attracted to other atoms and wants to fill up its outer shell. Okay, it has an attraction for neighboring atoms' electrons. Metals and nonmetals from the two sides of the periodic table usually form ionic compounds because their electronegativities are big enough to make them steal one of their sets of electrons. Okay, electronegativity usually is more than 1.7 from that side of the table to the other. So what happens? If this is the metal and this is the nonmetal, okay, the electron usually gets stolen that way and this becomes minus, sorry. This becomes plus. Because they're full plus, full minus charge, that's most likely a solid substance, and it's it's tough, it's brittle, it's more like a crystal. Now, when nonmetals and nonmetals get together, they usually share electrons because they're similar in, in, in electronegativity. But the two nonmetals, let's just call them, well, I'll put NM. Okay, so where does the electron up here stay? It stays extra on this atom. But in here, the nonmetal nonmetal stays between the two. So the electron is shared between the two. As a matter of fact, if this is sharing with other things, it has a there's a restriction about what shape they can be. If it's two groups coming off, they'll be linear. If it's three groups, it'll be trigonal planar. Okay, but they have to be between the atoms in a very rigorous sort of defined pattern. Okay, if they're close to electronegativity of each other, then there's no way the, the, the electrons are shared equally. If it's more than 0.3 but less than 1.7, that means one of these is going to get the electron more often than the other. Covalent molecules are shaped by a number of bonding groups coming off the center atom. Okay, formed by the separate theory. If there's three groups coming off, it's going to be trigonal planar. If there's four groups coming off, okay, one, two, three, four, five, that's going to be um, trigonal bipyramid. You just have to learn one group, two groups, three groups, four groups. Look at the center atom, how many groups are coming off, and you can tell the shape. Metal to metal uh, bonds. Oh, the last piece is that if at least one of these is a little bit plus and a little bit minus, Okay, then look to see is the molecule symmetric. If it's symmetric, that means it's pulled all in the same directions, so you won't have a plus and minus side. If it's lopsided, one group is different from any of the others, or you have two groups that are different or three groups that are different from the others, then it will be a polar molecule. The last one is metals have a special kind of way of bonding. They allow their electrons to sort of flow between them. So if this is the case where the metal went totally to the nonmetal, on this case for ionic compounds, The electron went totally over, and in covalent compounds, they're shared between the two. For metallic bonds, they are actually shared between the two, but there's sort of a community or a sea of electrons where the electron is free to go wherever it wants as long as someone replaces it in the meantime. So what does that mean? You can squish it, change the shapes of those atoms, because another electron will just come in and fill between there. That's why they're ductile. That's why they're malleable. They also conduct electricity, because as long as you're pouring electrons in this end, it doesn't matter if electrons flow at the other end. And that's what makes metallic bonding a little different. They're still tough. Metallic bonding and ionic bonding are strong forces, and that's why met metals and um, ionic compounds are usually solids. And usually it's not the covalent compound that's the bond that's breaking. It's usually a covalent compound is a self-contained unit. doesn't have a plus and minus side, so it's not that sticky to its neighboring molecules. So they're usually more like the gases or liquids or, or not as, as brittle. Okay, so that's an overview of the bond types. Look forward to the exam that's coming up in terms of determining these, writing these structures, talking about um, how we came up with this idea that there is electrons and protons and the attraction between them. But that's this unit for these, these two weeks. Good luck.